what up everybody welcome to another edition of the orange was texas football channel on youtube i'm jeff ketchum joined by anwar richardson today what's up what's up we'll both throw up uh, double deuces we're doing fire <laughs> sell today that's a, okay it's always a favorite segment uh that i've been doing for like over a decade now and people seem to like it on orange bloods we've done it on the youtube channel before people like it it's where you guys submit the questions and we submit the answers and we go back and forth and uh and before you go time. too deep before you go too deep we gotta tell everyone to like and subscribe the channel catch well i was just about to do that you can tell them like like and subscribe <laughs> what? Well, because I, when I do the editing catch, I put the stuff up there. So I, I was like, oh, shit, you, he's going to forget. He's going to forget. Now I'm going to do my editing process. I, it was in my brain. It was okay. the next thing. Okay. But, all right. Keep going. A little bit backwards or upside down or all of the above. But yeah, man, if you like this video, do us a favor. Hit the like button. And uh, you'd be doing us an even bigger solid if you subscribed, which means that forevermore as we do buy or sell or the Monday overreaction show or anything that we might do here on the channel, you're always able to see it right away and uh, can make it kind of appointment viewing. And catch, if we get enough subscribers and become popular enough, maybe you and I can fight Floyd Mayweather and make a killing <laughs> in a boxing match. Well, the cool thing about that is Floyd would let us go eight rounds. He would, he would. He would. But he did that in his career, too. I mean, True. Floyd was about winning easily and not about necessarily entertain. I, I think it's funny that anybody would have the expectation that now, now that he's a billionaire, <laughs> Correct. he would put himself into a position where he could hurt himself. Correct. <laughs> I don't know what people are expecting out of Floyd, but it weirdly seems to continue to, it's like they keep thinking that, a dog, an old dog can learn new tricks. And uh, I think that dog is enjoying being old right now. Uh, Onward, buy or sell. Okay. There's some good questions. I, I put them on Orange Bloods. We've seen some good questions there. I, we both put it up on Twitter. We've seen some good questions there. I'm going to let you go first. You pick the first. Where do you want to start on buy or sell today? All right. Well, I'm going to let me go to my, my Twitter account here because we had some really uh good ones here let me scroll down i like how you're completely worthless without your glasses i i oh man it is horrible <laughs> it is actually horrible and you, you, the worst part is when i try to go out and you know you want to like look smooth and stuff like the worst thing you want to do is do your readers but then i can't see the menu especially like in a nice restaurant oh. it's dark so it's just it's just so it's so bad so um so, yeah, we got a couple of buy or sells. I'm going to go to Jake Gibbons, buy or sell. Texas wins a conference title within the next five years. Oh, I'll go buy on that. Okay. I mean, the, the I had seen a variation of that question where the number was three. And that one gives me reason for pause. I don't know. I mean, nobody, you know, if, if, if someone's watching this video, it will make them happier if I say bye. Oh, yeah, no, Sarkeesian's definitely going to win a conference championship in the next three years. But I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't feel that in my bones that that's going to happen. Five? I can see that. Three? It gets us into that territory on war of how fast, what can, what are the proper set of expectations for this program with where it is, how long does it take to be great? And I, it, it, I don't have a good handle, especially until we see what the quarterback play is going to look like either under Casey Thompson or Hudson Card. It's really hard for me to jump from, they're gonna be good enough to consistently beat TCU and Oklahoma State to let's go to the moon. Mm. Yeah, I mean, five five years. I think. I mean, you give yourself a a good cushion off of five, right? I think it's a the, big cushion. That's a huge cushion. I mean, because if things go badly, you're just talking a coaching change, right? If it goes well, I mean, if Sark is here five years from now, then he's won a Big Twelve, you know, title, and Texas fans are happy. Um, if he hasn't won one, then he's not here five years from now. It's kind of like that simple math, but. 
you know, five years. You've learned. Where, You've been here seven years and you now completely understand the deal. <laughs> I, I, I 100 percent. It doesn't matter if I say Texas fans need to crawl before they run and, and, and run before they sprint. Because Texas fans are like, we should be a sprinting, period. So, you know, five years, I mean, that would have given him enough time to establish uh, himself, his program, everything he wants to do. That would also account for, and hell, do we even know Lincoln Riley is, is coaching at Oklahoma five years from now? I mean, I don't know. I mean, five years is such a long time. I don't know what marriage I would be on five, in, in a five-year time span. But um, I would- well, at I, least I, two I, more. Yeah, I could I could easily do two more. <laughs> you got two done. <laughs> I've got to stop doing it. I just got to stop doing it. Period. I just got to date. Just stop pop proposing. It's like a it's like the old subway cards. Like the more rings I get, like if I get the sixth one, I get one for free, right? So uh, I would I would give him I'll give him a yes. I'll give Texas a yes within five years. Um, you know that. that because catch if that if that's the case, then we're talking about, and I'll get to the next question. You're talking about the potential of Oklahoma potentially winning eleven straight championships. I don't think that's going to happen. And that's that's asking a lot for one program. But the real thing is, it's hard to give a definitive answer beyond this season. I mean, it really, you know what I mean? It's a little bit like starting a lawnmower. Once you once you pull it right and it starts, you're good. But sometimes. I don't know how many I don't know how many pulls it's going to take to get it started, and I, I feel like Sark's going to get it there. I just don't know how quickly uh, it is reasonably fair to ask him or expect him to get there. All right, buy or sell. This one comes from Gray Gordon okay. on Orange Bloods. Okay, no, so Gray, good guy. That is correct. If Bijan Robinson gets twenty five touches a game in twenty twenty one, then Texas will have a ten win season this year. Buy or sell. 25 touches a game, Texas has a 10-win season. I'll buy. And the reason why I'll buy that is from a, a different math perspective. If Bijan is getting 25 touches a game, that means he's getting a workload in the fourth quarter. That means Texas is ahead and Texas is trying to milk the clock. And so, you know, so I, I don't judge it of 25 touches therefore equates to him rushing for 130 yards 140 yards a game i equated to more if he's getting that many touches you're far ahead uh, or at least ahead to the point where you want to milk the clock and then he's compiling um you know carry after carry in the fourth quarter so i'll, I'll buy on that one follow-up question if Bijan gets 25 touches last season then texas beats iowa state and tcu Finishing the game, the regular season at nine and one, and playing in the Big Twelve Championship game. Apps bye, bye. I think it is as stubborn as you know Tom Herman was. I don't know if he does any reflection, and I know that you know they were saying, well, he's he's a freshman, he's got to come along. But at some point, catch when you see production. At some point, you just got you. You don't have to overthink it, right? And that's like the, sometimes I think what happens with coaches is they just overthink it. They're so smart and they're trying to just overthink. It. And sometimes it's what it's you get. get you gotta give it a kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. And at that point, you just got to understand that that was your best running back. Like obviously, it was your best running back. Keontae Ingram was a guy that struggled. I mean, we just know, and it's and he struggled unfortunately in big moments. And I hate for that to be his legacy here at Texas, but. You know, when you when you write the Keontae Ingram story, it will be of the things that happen. It, it will be uh, the the drop uh, versus LSU. It, it will be the, the TCU fumble. It will be the following week opening up against Oklahoma. And as for all they wanted to say about, well, you know, Keon, you know, what did they wanted to say? Um, Bijan fumbled in one of these games earlier this year. That, and that's one of the reasons why the justification why they wasn't going to play him. So your lead back also fumbled, but give it to the person who's a playmaker. So I absolutely buy on that. Real quick, I'm going to sell on both. And I think there's a couple of nuances to the question. Um, there's this average of 25 touches a game. That doesn't mean that in every game he gets 25 touches. Um, and I, Bijan might go for 25 touches against Iowa State and Oklahoma this year. That doesn't mean they're both they're going to win those games 
just because Bij- it, it is not as simple as if Bijan Robinson gets 25 touches in either of those games, those two teams might just be better. And, you know, Deontay Foreman had 25 touches in some games that Texas lost. And he was incredible. This is still a Texas team that's got to be better than six in the Big 12 on defense. So there's a jump there that has to be made. And I don't know. I, we, is it 25 touches and good quarterback play? Or is it 25 touches and shaky quarterback play? Because this position still has some maturing and growing up to do. There's too many, there's too many little nuances to that that I'll buy the opening. And I can't say that TC, they beat TCU and Iowa State last year with 25 touches a game because I can't ignore the fact that he got hurt in the Texas Tech game and, you know, could have died on the field. Like, I, I still don't know that we've given what happened in that game where he lands on his head. I've never seen that before. We, we kind of brush it off that he just came back and was out for a little bit. But, like, you know, he doesn't play the next week against TCU for good reason. Because he almost maybe died on the field with that tackle. So I, I'm not going to include the t- TCU game from a year ago because that means I have to change the history before that as well. I don't want to get too much into we've, you know, we've, we're changing history with things that we can't actually change and then not taking into account all of the di- different things. I, I mean, I guess Tom Herman's still here in that in, in a world where – he never gets hurt and he gets to play against TCU. And maybe that means he's more available against Oklahoma because then he hasn't missed the game. But like suddenly we're playing a, a, a thing of what ifs that I'm just not comfortable with. And I'm just not quite ready to go that 25 touches a game this year means that they win 10 in the regular season without question. Onward, you have another by yourself. Oh, question? I got listen, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go off of Twitter. Okay. Okay. Chad Gibson's got one. Um, he's got two, but I'm going to read the one because the other one, uh, you know, his second question is, you know, buy or sell Stark will be at Texas through Saban's contract extension at 2029. That, I mean, I don't even know how you answer that, but I, I think this first one's a really good one. Um, buy or sell eight wins in year one will be viewed as a success given the talent on this year's roster. That's a big sell. I mean, I really do believe everybody that just heard that question will think to themselves, Tom could have got eight. Or Tom could have got you nine. Maybe. I mean, in, in, in theory, I go back to last season. If USF is on the schedule, Kansas is on the schedule. That's, a that's with a senior quarterback. I mean, but that's you know, a nine I, win I team. don't know what this rebuild, reload, whatever, re, whatever word we're using relaunch, whatever the word is, I don't know what Tom Herman does with this group. We'll find out what Sarkeesian will do with it. It'll always be a bit of a mystery with with Herman. Although I think if Herman is the head coach, there's no doubt about Hudson Card being the starter. That okay. I believe. Hey, can I get can I, can I give you one more? Absolutely. This is <laughs> I don't know how you're going to react to this because you're going to you like the person asking the question, but you might lose your shit when you hear it. Okay. Chris Bennett. Okay. Buy or sell, Sark has Texas in the playoffs by year three. I just, you know my response to this. (laughs) That's why I was wanting to go there. Chris, I got to sell because I just can't be bothered with talking about the playoffs. I can't. I cannot entertain. We, we, we don't even completely know how to answer whether or not in the next five years Texas wins the Big 12. I mean, it takes a whole lot of burnt orange confirmation bias to just assume, yep, it's definitely going to happen. When those two things were just asked with Charlie Strong and Tom Herman, and if in the immediate first year of asking that question about either of them, Texas fans would have lost their minds to someone suggesting that they wouldn't have been able to do it. 
I'm in a, you got to show me stage. This Texas football program is, hasn't showed us anything yet. And so I just, so the answer is sell. So Steve Sarkeesian will not have this program in the playoff in the first three years. And if I'm wrong, then that means a whole hell of a lot of stuff has happened that hasn't come remotely close to happening yet. And I'm okay with like in two or three years, someone bumping this, you know, bumping the thread, bumping this YouTube video and saying, remember back in June of 2021 when Ketch said sell to the idea that Sark could get us there? I hope that happens. I hope everybody bookmarks this video and we're all laughing about what a knucklehead I was back in June to not so so cavalierly believe, but I just don't. I do not believe in Santa Claus. I do not believe in the Easter Bunny. I do not believe in mythical creatures. And at this point, Texas in the playoff is a mythical creature for me based on what we've seen in the last 10 seasons. It's been a decade. You'll forgive me if that has left some real scar damage. Wow. That's strong. I don't know if I have as, as strong of an opinion, but I will sell. And the reason why I will sell is like, look, let's, let's just, just do simple math. Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson. The, the catch for the next three years, we can probably bookmark those teams as the three teams that are in the, the, the final four. And then at that point, it's just about who's, who's the fourth team. Who's, who's the other team that could potentially sneak into there? And what you essentially what you would be asking for Texas to get in there, you, it would have to be an 11 and one season at the at minimum. Uh, and then, of course, a Big 12 championship. Like th those are the things that are going to have to happen in a conference that we've we've seen them struggle against the Oklahoma States of the world, the TCUs of the world clearly the Oklahoma's of the world. Uh, Iowa State is, has obviously been a thorn you know, in the side. Texas recently. has some brutal non-conference games coming up oh. in the next few years as well. Yeah, they got, what, Alabama on the schedule. Alabama's that next year is Alabama, I think. Yeah, the next two years. Yeah, so Alabama's coming up. Ohio State's coming up. Florida's coming up. I mean, so, yeah. And, and these, these, I mean, some of these lo potential losses could happen early, but – yeah, I that, mean, that's no offense. Nobody, nobody at this point believes that Texas is going to win either of those Alabama games. Just correct. <laughs> just you, you're telling me you believe in Santa Claus at that point to be like, oh yeah, no, we're going to win. We're definitely going to win at home. I mean, it's like, uh, I mean, Texas isn't ready for that yet. And you're not beating Mike Gundy at home consistently. So if, what it means is in the years that you're playing Alabama, you're going to have to be perfect in those other two seasons. Yeah. Because yeah. at that point, if you just if you just go with me here for a second, Texas loses to Alabama in two incredibly close games. Then they had to be perfect the rest of the way, uh, which, you know, the good news is in the playoffs, what you wouldn't be punished for losing to Alabama in that opener, you wouldn't. It'd be like a feather in your cap in a weird way. The rub is you have to run the table in the rest of the 11 games plus the Big 12 championship game. I mean, again, it just sounds myopic right now until we see this program. Forget about running. I want to see a steady pace. I want to see like old people at the mall jogging, right? They're not running. And that's not walking either. They do the whole, the hips are moved. You know what I mean? You've seen those mm -hmm. people, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're really fast. There's even like, I think, an Olympic category for it. Fast mall walking. I want to see Texas fast mall walking before I am saying things like, okay, they're going to win the next 11. <laughs> next 12. The next 12 and never slip up. Um you know, I think there's a lot of recruiting that has to take. This roster isn't built for that yet. It's just not. And, you know, the question then comes into recruiting this year. It's why the conversation of what happens in recruiting for the next month, 
two months going into the summer, you and I've had a lot of conversations of what does it need to look like? What, what is the, the sign that this thing is going the way that it needs to go? It's the reason why I wrote a column this weekend on Sunday talking about these are the six most important names that every Texas football fan needs to memorize because if the answers to the questions that we're getting about, hey, playoffs and Big 12 championships, if those are going to happen, they've got to win in recruiting with the, the big name guys that will allow this program to fast mall walk, get into a, a nice steady jog, and then to really sprint. And there's still a few steps to be taken. You know, what happens the next couple of months in recruiting will go a long way towards determining how we go back and answer these exact same questions in a couple of months. If we take Chris Bennett's question and ask it on Labor Day, we will have a much better feel for how this very first full recruiting class is going to look. And if it has the, the if there are a couple of five-star offensive linemen in there, if Denver Harris picks Texas over Alabama, if t- it looks like Texas can sign three or four or five stars in this class and then surround them with a bevy of other big time prospects, then the answer to can Texas be in the contention for a playoff in three years, I think it's much easier to answer. You can start to see that first piece of puzzle truly in place that could lead to something like that. It's just premature for me right now, because if Texas doesn't get a top five class in year one, I don't think there's any way this program is competing for a playoff spot in less than three years. The roster just isn't there. And Anwar, there's a question that I want to get to that I think is a really good one that speaks to this thing, okay? Right. Harambi 85, or it's Harambi 85. He's got a nice cute little dog avatar on Orange Bloods. Okay. Right. Buy or sell. Aggie is crushing it on the offense and defensive line recruiting front, and Texas desperately needs to match it moving forward. Buy? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, who was the who was the guy that um good defensive lineman that's leaning towards it? Is it is uh we talked about Mary Alexander, years. the five star, my guy right now, who I think is the best prospect in the state. Although, look, I, I think he and Denver Harris and Quinn Ewers are so close. I almost I almost ranked Quinn Ewers number one. Like I gave it serious consideration. All three of those guys are national top nine prospects right now in the rivals.com rankings that were released yesterday. That guy was committed to Georgia. He decommitted yesterday. I think everybody thinks he's going to go to Texas A&M. And, you know, and on top of that, there's another kid out of Duncanville, a defensive end named Omario Bohr, who was at Ohio State this past weekend on an official visit. He's also not, I mean, Texas isn't in his top five. He's not visiting Texas. So it's, Another year on the defensive line front, especially with pass rushers. I mean, when we when we talk about guys that can get to the quarterback, this is the area that Texas has failed at in recruiting on the defensive side of the ball. And you wonder when, man, when are they going to have to pay the piper for that? Well, right now, right now, Texas doesn't have a guaranteed double-digit sack candidate. Like, you know, and Joseph Osai didn't even hit those numbers last year, but he was definitely your threat. Texas has had nobody that you know can fill that void. And it's been on the recruiting front. They haven't been able to get these guys. And look, the conversation with the offensive lineman has gone on for years. I mean, you know, Anwar doesn't even color cover recruiting, you know, head first. I mean, it's not his primary beat. But he sure as hell knows that Tommy Brockermeyer didn't pick Texas a year ago. He knows that in a historically good offensive line class a year ago, Texas got none. And he knows that in this year's recruiting class, there are more five star, there are three five star offensive linemen again from the state of Texas as ranked by rivals.com. The expectation is Texas has to get two of three. They have to get two of those guys. And, you know, all these questions have been intertwined a little bit on war, really, because 
before you can answer these big questions, you've got to go narrower and yes. answer smaller questions. Texas isn't good enough up front on both sides of the ball right now to be talking about, I think, playoffs. No, I, I, I 100% agree. It is, it's the thing that we've talked about. And look, there, there, there are anomalies in the world, right? Connor Williams ends up being a little bit of anomaly from where his ranking was to end up being, uh, you know, a draft pick. Uh, but Sam Cosby is another one of those guys. And so, okay, anomaly. But that's not that's not how you build, you know, success on the offensive line. Like, you've got to get the word that is. And, and to your, your point, Catch, when the Texas, the state of Texas is having that these kind of, you know, one year after another, the last two years, a lot of good offensive linemen, defensive linemen, of course, as well, in, in Texas isn't getting those guys or guys aren't even looking at Texas. And let's not, let's just keep it real. Let's keep it a hundred. You said, that's what the one thing we're going to do on this YouTube channel, Like Jimbo Fisher, you know, he's got, he's got some weight to him. Pe these, these young people understand who Jimbo Fisher is. They've seen him at Florida state. They know what that guy can do. Like Jimbo Fisher comes to them as a head coach and said, this is what I did at Florida state. This is what I'm doing at AM. And by the way, would you like to play in the SEC? Did you see how many people were, were drafted? And we've talked about this before. Texas fans don't like that Texas AM talks about SEC, SEC, SEC. But guess what? It's, it's going to help at the end of the day because guys are going to say, I do want to play against Alabama. I do want to play against Georgia. I do want to be under the bright lights. I do want to have that kind of attention. I do want to have, even though Texas AM doesn't have more guys drafted perception ends up becoming reality. So, you know, yeah, the, 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 it, it is a challenge that Sarkeesian, that he has to do that, like the, his other predecessors have, whether it's Tom Herman or Charlie Strong, like you've got to be able to do that. So the, the challenge is, okay, when Texas A&M, I'm not Texas A&M, but Bama comes in here, Ohio State comes here, in here, and all these, co these programs are talked about building the wall around Texas and keeping on our guys in the state of Texas. Okay, sounds good in theory, but now if you're gonna if they're gonna build the wall, they're gonna stay. What Sarkeesian has to do and his staff has to do is got to give them a reason to choose the Longhorns over the Aggies. That's a challenge. Just to put a bow on that question, this is an amazing number. In the last three recruiting classes, and nice job here in B85 for asking a question uh, that I think allows a little perspective that people aren't thinking of. Last three years in recruiting, 19, 20, and 21, AM has signed eight kids who are either offensive linemen or defensive linemen who were ranked as either five stars or high four stars in the rivals recruiting rankings. Eight, including four a year ago. Texas has signed none. So right now, when it comes to recruiting elite of the elite defensive linemen and offensive linemen, and, and not even going in my rankings, because like you, you could even say Texas had one because, you know, I would look at a guy like Alfred Collins and I would personally put him in that group. So but I mean, even if we're changing, I mean, even if you were to go so far as to say Vernon Broughton, who I don't think is I would not personally put in that category. But boy, you're eight to two. And if you're going to include him, a and has a couple of others who are at the same ranking that Collins and Brout were in the rivals ranking. So then suddenly they're at 10 or 11 and M is recruiting the offensive line and defensive line the way Texas needs to. And it is a, it's a big disappointment that this year there are two five-star caliber defensive linemen in the state of Texas. And the smart money is, is that Texas, won't get either of them on campus for an official visit. That's bad. That is not a development. I can assure you that Steve Sarkeesian ever wants to revisit, ever repeat. If they've got two in 2023, believe me, he wants those guys coming in for visits. And so, yeah, it is, that's an elephant in the room in the program right now. They've got to start doing a better job there. The good news though, if you're Texas, your defensive line outside of being able to generate a pass rush, is a team strength. I do think that Texas feels good about what it has there. I think the offensive line is the subject that we all have talked about on WAR for so long. They've got to get better. They've got to get high-end guys. 
You know, it can't be all tech. They need two or three Sam Cosmes in the program, guys who are going to end up being first or second round draft picks in the building at all times. And it's hard to look at the Texas offensive line depth chart right now and point to a single guy on there and say, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. In in two or three years, that guy's definitely going to be a Thursday or Friday guy on the NFL draft. And, you know, that's where they want to be. That's where A&M thinks it's taking its program. That's what the talent level they've brought in would suggest where they're going. A little bit less so right now for the Longhorns, something they dearly want to change. Okay. I, I've got a few good ones. Okay. Um, and let me do let me do three back-to-back quick, quick ones. Okay. Okay. Larry, there's a guy, Larry Wonderfish, where I think is this is somebody's burner account, okay? Because La- Larry <laughs> joined Larry joined Twitter in Jan. It looks like in January of 2020. He's following 30 people. It has zero followers. So this is somebody's burner. I know. I know you're you're doing something, Larry. That's not your real name, but buy or sell. No matter who wins the QB battle, <laughs> Sark has the Mac Jones effect on the player example the top QB in the conference slash potential high draft pick for Casey Thompson I mean by I think the thing that I believe in Steve Sarkeesian the most is his ability to develop quarterbacks and put together a good offense but develop quarterbacks first and foremost I do think you have to recall though that with Mac Jones that was like a senior that guy's an older player who although was inexperienced in terms of playing time, had been around the program for a long time, hence his ability to go into the NFL draft this year. Um, I think Sark's going to have a positive impact on those dudes. I just don't know that what – I don't know that that means their first team all conference right away. Uh, All right. Let me give you uh, another one. Uh, Oh, these are are really good ones. Okay, how about this? This is from Caleb Chapman. He says, buy or sell – Sark's actions in the transfer portal shows his confidence in his own ability and a lack of talent and or depth on the defensive side. Bye. Okay. Clearly. I mean, the fact that he's allowed the defensive side of the ball to take so much of what they've done in the portal to try to help that side of the ball, I think absolutely speaks to his confidence with, what he and that coaching staff will be able to do with that side of the ball. Absolutely. All right. Here's here's the last one of this, this quick speed round here. And I like this one. Uh, This is from Michael. I'm probably going to butcher your name. It's uh, Mosaic, I believe. Um, M-E-Z-A-Y-E-K. But it'll be on the screen. Buy or sell. Texas goes two and one against TCU Iowa State in Oklahoma. So, I mean, right now I have Texas losing both Iowa State and Oklahoma. Okay. So you did. You have a TCU win, though. Yeah, I'll give them TCU. I don't know how smart that is, but I'll give them TCU as of this moment. Okay. I, um, it's doomsday scenario if they, if they, if if it's zero and three against those teams. Correct. It's not good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, look, Oklahoma and Iowa State are both two preseason top 10 teams with Oklahoma coming in with a returning starting quarterback that's projected to be the number one overall pick in the NFL draft next year. And they've got a head coach that's never lost the Big 12. He's won it every year. And then you've got an Iowa State team. That game – will be one of the most – that game may decide whether or not Iowa State plays in the Big 12 championship game or not, which means when you consider that they've got 20-plus senior returning starters who were on last year's team, they've all come back. A lot of those guys could have gone pro this year. I say a lot. Maybe like four or five of those guys could have gone pro, and they didn't because they wanted to give it one more go for the, for the old university – to try to win something, to try to be remembered as an all-time great LSU team, in order to do that, they will have to win that game against Texas, which means that game might be the most important home game of every single one of those players' entire career. 
when you when you look at the Iowa State game through the prism of them instead of just the way it looks like for Texas, I think you realize how difficult that game may end up being. It's no shame losing those two games. It then gets into, do I think Texas runs the table in the other 10? Because TCU for me is just a metaphor for, I mean, we know why they're listed. Mm-hmm. But in order for this season to really be a good season, we just got to put all those teams. We got to put Louisiana. We got to put Arkansas. We got to put TCU, Oklahoma State. Can't, all of them, all of these games need to go into a pile together. And forget about Iowa State and Oklahoma. Is Texas going to win the rest of those games? And I don't know. It's hard for me to say yes right now, that they'll win them all. Because if it's – I don't think there's a shame in going one and two against two against those te- teams that you mentioned. The season for me really is about being able to be better than all of the other teams, because if Texas finishes nine and three or 10 and two, but it's a good nine and three. And we all know what that means. Like last year was to me, wasn't a good seven and three season or sure. yeah. six and totally three, agree. not, with the, you know, whatever, however many games they played. Then, but three. you can go nine and three and it'd be a good year. And at, by the end of it, you can win your bowl game, go 10 and three and feel like you're getting ready to soar into the stratosphere. You know, it's okay. I can see Texas having that kind of season. It just may mean that they don't win the two toughest games on their schedule, neither of which are at home. I just think that that is fairly problematic. Yeah, I, I'll I'll sell on that. I'll, I'll let you get to your questions, but I'll, I'll you know I'll I'll sell on it just because, like you said, the two top ten teams. Um, you know, Matt Campbell catch. I'm 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 not 100 convinced that he stays after this season. I don't know if his stock will be any higher than it will be after this year. If you and if Matt Campbell stays after losing that many seniors, then he loves Iowa State and he's there for a lifetime. But I think the NFL teams are going to line up for him. And last year it was Detroit. And I mean, Detroit's where, you know, coaching careers go to die, right? But if he gets a chance to, you know, where I think he'll be have a lot of suitors and a lot of teams willing to pay him hand over fist, you know, th- it's a big year for him. And, and so to your point, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving Texas a win against Oklahoma until they do it. Like, it's just, it just is what it is. Um, Iowa State's a tough uh, out. And then, you know, TCU, I mean, we'll just see. We'll, we'll see what happens. But I, I cannot ignore, I'll get, you know, we'll, we'll move on. But I cannot ignore the facts, which is new offensive scheme, new defensive scheme, new quarterbacks, right? I mean, there, there's a lot of moving parts. And so for you to, to come in and say it's plug and play, I think it's asking a lot. Someone asked earlier, let me see if I can find – the person who asked the question. I right, the question. I don't have it queued up, but I'll get the person who said it here in a second. You, oh, here it is. 636-97005. <laughs> That's the username on Orange Bloods. Oh, That's not, there was a song or something. Okay, go ahead. Yes. No, yeah. 636-97005 asks, buy or sell Longhorn football, basketball, and baseball will all finish in the top 20. In the upcoming school year, that's an, easy buy. that's an easy buy for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. I mean, hot is, you know, the baseball success you expect to continue. You know, Beard, you know, now, you know, he's lost a couple of guys, obviously. But even the losing of the, like, a Greg Brown, I mean, it wasn't like their ace contributor. He's, he, you know, he's obviously a, you know a lottery pick but he wasn't the guy that you said he's that dude at that point so i think beard's good enough especially with the recruiting that he's done and i can see texas as a top 20 team so yeah i would i would buy on that one yeah i think i think texas this season is going to be a top 15 to 20 type team in football i think they're going to be top 20 in basketball and there's ever reason to believe based on the way the, the baseball program's been going the last couple of years last two years that they'll be Top, tw- yeah, 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 yeah. For me, that's the right question, and that's where Texas is starting. That's where Texas starts right now. Where do they build from there? And I think, weirdly, that uh, ends up being the, the 
that's the question I think that indicates the most about where Texas is and where it will be more so than anything else that we've answered so far this season. Uh, another buy or sell. Are you ready for this? You hit it. Cowboys go eight and eight or worse this year. Buy or sell. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go sell that they go better than eight and eight. Nine and seven, baby. I got to sell. I just, I can't. I, I got to sell on that one. I, I've just, I, yeah, I, I don't think that conference is that good. So, I mean, now the Cowboys have a, a traditional way of, of, you know, falling in their face, but I, I, nah, I got to, I got to sell on that. I, I'll, I get, I'm going to get Dak a little bit more credit. I think the defense is a little bit better. Um, could be a bit, potential better. I thought the draft was, you know, pretty good from a, a Cowboys standpoint. They, they did fairly well, actually. Um, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to sell on that one. By yourself. The quarterback that starts the season for the Longhorns won't be the quarterback that finishes the season as the starter for the Longhorns. I'm gonna sell. I think I think it, it, it's it's twofold for a couple of reasons because the, what what that question really is is a Casey Thompson question, and because if 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 Hudson Card wins the job, Casey Thompson is gone. Charles Wright never plays. And if Charles Wright plays, it's only due to injury. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So, in, and I don't see a scenario where Casey Thompson wins the job and he gets benched five weeks in. I mean, at that point, you know, you, you've just solidified at that point that he's not the dude. And so I think, I, I think if Hudson Card's the guy, I don't think Sark plays around. I think he's got to focus in on getting Charles Wright ready. And so if it's if it's close, then he's got to make a good make a decision. But I I think I think that's a sell. I think that's a hard sell for me. You got any more questions? I got I got one from um, I don't you know I got to do better with, with names, but I think his name is Pio or, or it's P I O the Villa. Uh, I've got uh, the Villa, but his buy or sell. Texas will bringing it will be bringing in one or two more players from the portal. Buy. I, I think they've got room for one more. And, you know, two, I think then comes, I don't know how the math allows them to get two, but based on the exercise that I did a couple of weeks ago, they had two spots left. And obviously one of them has been filled uh, by, by, by Keelan Robinson. And, you know, on paper, if I've added it up right, they should still have a spot left. So if the question is one or two, I'll go by. Okay, let's this, this speed through the, the last three I've got. One is by Devon uh, Byers. I'm going to rework it for, for you, Devon, to make it a little bit easier. Uh, buy or sell, Texas will have a receiver that catches uh, 100 balls this season. So, oh, God, no. <laughs> Because he, he said, would it be, you know, Troy or Mary, uh, Xavier Worthy or somebody else? You say nobody. I mean, that's only happened a couple of times in the history of the program. <laughs> okay. Um, but, yeah, I, I'd sell on that one, too. Uh, buy or sell. Got one, two more. Um, this is from ALBTRS. So, at least I'm not pronouncing it. It's just some kind of acronym. Um, buy or sell. Texas needs to go out of state for certain position groups since the in-state talent is light at that position? Bye. I mean, I think Texas needs to be going out of state at all positions. You can make the case offensive line is a position where, you know, the state of Texas, quite frankly, its offensive linemen haven't developed and performed out of, out of high school into college as well as some other regions. Weirdly, you could say that Texas ought to be spending a lot of its time trying to recruit elite of the elite offensive linemen out West because they have better hit rates. Like weirdly the state of Washington, when it produces big time offensive linemen, they tend to turn into high level NFL prospects for whatever reason, the state of Texas hasn't quite done as well. Um, you know, tight ends are hard to find. And although Jatavian Sanders is a guy that Texas is bringing in, 
who will probably play at tight end. Up until then, it hasn't. The state hasn't been producing the likes of of high high end consistently year in and year out. I mean, there are some years where there are no tight ends. So yeah, linebackers like there are a number of positions that it would be, defensive linemen. I mean, part of why Texas A and M is out recruiting Texas right now along the defensive line is because they've done a better job of going out of state and landing big time defensive line prospects to supplement what they're doing in state. It is, I think, one of the worries that I have about the 2021, or excuse me, 2022 recruiting class for the Longhorns. I'm not seeing where Sark and this staff have inroads in on elite of the elite defensive or any prospects. So I think they're going to end up getting the majority of the guys they need to get in state. They haven't yet been able, I think, to emerge as a leader or co-leader for any of the na- – well, the, the linebacker from California that just left town, uh, tell, tell you – I'm, I'm, I'm not going to butcher his name and okay. say – but Sukumel said it so well in the podcast. did it amazing. <laughs> amazing. Wish he was here. <laughs> yes, exactly. Jason, uh, I think that, you know, that's a kid that that be the one guy right now that off the top of my head I think – the Longhorns are in a really good position with beyond that, you know, I don't know. So, uh, but yeah, no, I, I would say bye. Sorry. That was not a short answer. That's okay. That's all right. And, and, the, and the last one um, from, it looks like Whirly bird BD. I don't know. Anyway, uh, but you're, you're on here, BD buy or sell the big 12 adds two more teams at the end of the year. Sell. Because right now, I don't think there's a guarantee that adding two more teams increases television revenue. That has been one of the things that has kept the Big 12 from going to 12 as it is. You have to add the right two to justify dividing the money being made into 12 instead of 10. Correct. And, you know, I, there's been some conversation. I don't know that Arkansas – What what is Arkansas literally bringing to the table for the Big 12? It's another state, but it's a state with limited eyeballs, limited limited natural resources in the way of recruiting. I mean, it's not like Kansas would be like, oh, yeah, no, let them in because suddenly we'll have access to the hotbed of talent in Arkansas. Sure, yeah. Not happening. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm not buying that the Big 12 is set to expand because the one thing we know about the Big 12 right now is that it's not viewed like the SEC. And whereas CBS and the other television partners have been proactive and very aggressive in locking up the TV rights for the SEC and making sure that they get theirs, the Big 12 is not a conference right now that its TV partners are rushing towards to try to lock up beyond the current TV deal I think there's a very conscientious effort to it's okay to overpay for one conference TV product. Yeah. I don't know that anybody's rushing to do that with the big 12 right now. I might be wrong. And and who knows, maybe, maybe they'll get to 12 and that's exactly how they'll justify being able to get their TV partners to come to the table and, and hand them cash over fist. I'm just saying sell for now for those reasons. And I'm selling it. it I'll, I'll agree with you. Like, use for the most part, rich people don't like to give back money. So that just you you have that in it. But when you think about this conference catch, when you really think about the biggest games in this conference, what are they? Texas OU is probably the biggest game that's on the schedule of, of this conference of lore. What's the second one? Maybe Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. You know, maybe is that number two as far as like the a game that you and I would watch. Uh, just because it's kind of a great, great rivalry game. When you get I past the that, TV ratings would probably say Texas versus anybody. There's nobody sure. else. There's nobody That's the else. But once you get past Texas OU, what other game to, or, to you is must see TV in the Big Twelve? Bedlam. And that's it. That's it. Not, that's other it. Than the Texas games, obviously. Yes, I mean the majority of Texas games. But I'm, if you move Texas out of the equation. 
And then I say, okay, it's it's Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. We want to watch that, even though Oklahoma seemingly wins every year. Um, there's nothing else. So to, to your point, as far as the TV contracts are concerned, you can see them saying, all right, it's it's hard. I mean, catch we 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 cover this this conference, okay? And it, it in times, you know, it is an eleven o'clock kickoff, and it's uh, you know Kansas State versus TCU, and you're like. Well, I want to watch it because Texas plays Kansas State in three weeks, right? Or Texas plays TCU in two weeks. So let me get a little scouting report and have some knowledge. But I mean, you, you don't really want to go past the first half unless it's like a really good game, right? You, you're probably starting to flip around and see what else is on. You, and you're like, oh, who, who's Kentucky? Kentucky, Georgia. I mean, I'll watch that instead. So I, I totally get that in it. And I thought, honestly, catch if, if, if the Big 12 wanted to expand and they when they said they were going to expand a few years ago and then magically said that they wasn't going to do it, I thought going into Florida would be the only thing that made sense to open up. So if you can't get guys in the state of Texas, then you could open it up by saying maybe you get some guys from, you know, in, in that Florida blueprint, you know, and you would try to go after USF or UCF. But the only issue uh, with something like that is you still got to compete against Alabama in the state of Florida. You still got to compete against Clemson in the state of Florida. You got to go against Georgia a little bit more head to head. And the guys who would be going to UCF or USF that you would technically be recruiting them away from, recruiting them away from the schools, there aren't really guys that would be impact players for you. So that would be the only thing I thought could maybe make a little sense. Outside of that, I'm with you. It, you just keep it what it is and, and Texas, this has to be a program that a few years from now has to decide it is one to remain in the Big 12, All right. which they probably will because they like the money. We'll end it with a few rapid fire, Let's do it. fire sell questions for you. Buy or sell, you'll wear some South Florida gear this weekend. Sell. I got my son's birthday is this weekend. I, I'm, I'm going to be... You know, all all in. I pro, I pro, I probably will, but I mean, maybe I will now. But now that you mention it, you know what? Bye, bye. Just 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 to support my alma mater. Sure, bye. I was gonna say, man, you can't punk out on the weekend. Yeah, come to town for a super regional. I know, but you know, it's you just don't care. I don't <laughs> care. Like I went to USF, and I care about the football program, and I want to see them succeed. But I mean. You know, you you guys know what I've been doing dealing with for four years and then last year. Like, shit ain't been good. All right. Buy or sell, you would let your kid go to Texas A&M. That's a great question. But the question, the, the question would be, I need to know if we're talking from an academic standpoint or an athletic standpoint. I mean, do you have to does it matter? Does it matter? Yes, absolutely. I think so. Scholarship, you're saying yes, non-scholarship, no. Non is so okay. If it was if it was purely on academics, then no, he wouldn't go to A and M. If it was for a scholarship, like if let's say it's athletic scholarship, then I would. Uh, I mean, am I still working at Orange Bloods? I don't know. <laughs> if I'm <laughs> if I'm working at Orange Bloods and we're still around, that you know. Uh, what would it be? He's eight years. So, uh, gosh, 10 years from now. So that's could be, I mean, it could still technically be here. Um, if I'm working at orange bloods, then no, if I'm not, if I'm not with, if, if it's orange bloods, then it's a hard no. I'm not dealing with you guys, um, in dealing with that shit. But, but if it wasn't for orange bloods, then I guess it's, it's kind of fair game, but I don't know if I want to wear them. Out. Same, same answer for Oklahoma. Yeah, not, not, not for the academic institution. I mean, you got UT's academics. I mean, it's freaking pristine. I mean, this is a hell of an academic institution. Like, this is where you go to get the hookup. Like, if my kid can get into UT, I, absolutely, from an academic standpoint. And hell, I would consider him being academic and then do a walk-on at UT just for the diploma for where he could be years from now. Are you I went to USF. How Texas? many famous USF alumni do you know? You know what I'm saying? Are are you impressed that I got in ac academically to Texas? I no, because I I heard the standards aren't the same. Oh, <laughs> I, I I don't know. Could you get in now? Is the question? No, I could not. Okay, that's the thing. I'm not quite sure how I got in then. But <laughs> that's, it. that's the only thing. Uh, by last two questions, 
this comes from El Che Guarva. El Che Guarva. You know, he's like the. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Buy or sell defense improves over the last season. And by the way, it's like Chi something. It's more Chi something like that. Uh, yeah. I know we're, we're totally mispronouncing it though. Um, it's, it's not Che, it's Chi. But anyway, um, yes, the defense does improve. I think they ranked like seventh last year. So I definitely think there's a proof. I think I think you can put them in, at a top five potentially. Um, I can definitely see that. I I know you're not as sold on Ray Thornton, and we'll we'll get to that at some point uh, later this year. But I, I think there's a potential for this defense to be better. I mean, if there were seven last year, so I mean, if it's not better than than last year's defense, then this this thing is not going well at all. So I, I would have I want to. I think they will be better. Yeah, I think they'll be. A- a top four defense in the Big 12 this year. I do think they'll be better. Buy or sell, last question of the day. Same username from Orange Bloods that I already butchered. Catch is still a social justice warrior. Buy. Yeah. He absolutely is a social justice warrior. But what Catch has realized is that the he's le- realized the importance of an inner voice as opposed to an outer voice. And he absolutely is. He, he didn't, he, it's not like his beliefs went away, but he understands that, all right, there's certain things that our fan base don't, doesn't want to hear that they don't agree with. And so what catch is finally learned in his, in his older age, some thoughts you just keep to yourself. Look, I, I have certain beliefs. I have certain things and causes that I believe in and I support of, but I do that on my own time. That's why I get I get Facebook friend requests catch all the time from Longhorn fans and I decline them all. You know why? Because I have Facebook as my little place where I if I want to go ahead and express my opinions and get into social debates or political debates or whatever to have you. That's in my little circle of friends. Doesn't affect anybody else. So absolutely. I think catch has finally learned the, the importance of, you know what, some shit like I just got to keep to myself and keep it moving. Just remember, Jesus was the world's first social justice warrior. Uh, and on that note, for Jeff and Anwar, we'll do it You again. are comparing Hit yourself to like Jesus. Button. You Hit just like compared button. yourself to our Lord and Savior. Well, no, I just well, said my Lord and Savior. justice warrior. That's all I'm saying. You compared yourself to my Lord and Savior. That's kind of, that was kind of his thing from, from what I hear. Uh, for myself and Anwar, we'll do it again, maybe by ourselves again <laughs> next weekend. Like and subscribe. Do us that favor if we made you chuckle even once or twice a day. Thanks for watching.